Hey guys, welcome back to Killer Keyboards. Today I've got the Cowlinius to review, which were kindly sent by all caps. These are currently in stock, so if you want to check them out, link will be in the description. The Cowlinius have two variants. The black stem is a long pole made of POM measuring at 14.3 millimeters, and the white stem is made out of UHM WPE with 13.8 millimeters. For the sake of pronouncing this stem, I'm gonna call it the Oogle stem. Now on. Both spring weights have 63.5 grams. Both the upper and lower housings are POM with four different colors named taro, strawberry, mango, and milk. We have seen a full POM switch before, and that is the NK cream. These are notoriously known for their scratchiness and how not smooth they are. However, with some breaking in and lube, they feel pretty smooth and sound great. So can the cow linears present a better representation for the POM switches? Let's find out. Both switches have pretty tight tolerances, so I decided not to film them. I'm just going to run this clip and let you guys see the comparison. Both switches suffer from a little bit of spring ping and leaf ping. By a little bit, I mean pressing it against your ear. When typing on the stock, you won't hear the leaf ping, but it doesn't sound too clean. I'm surprised these aren't as scratchy as the NK creams and feel decently smooth while typing. Similar to the cream, the palm stem experiences some friction when pressing on the key off center to the left or the right. The Uber does not have this. For the people that don't know, what is UHMWPE anyways? It stands for Ultra High Molecular Weight Polyethylene, a material used for durability and low coefficient of friction, unlike POM. Going off topic here, but the Uwe material has also been used for shoulder, knee and hip replacements. This article states that the material is used on articulating surfaces of the joints. So if you know someone who's had a joint replacement, ask them about it and tell them about how it is used in mechanical switches. The POM long pole has a typical long pole sound. It sits on the high pitch, which I consider clacky. After applying some lube, you can hear a considerable lower pitch compared to the stock sound. The stock Uber is my least favorite out of the two, but we can also observe a noticeable lower pitch after lube too. I have to note that lubing the Uber makes it much more quiet. So if you're into that, that is a plus. So now moving on to how they feel. I think these would benefit from breaking in. The smoothness after lubing is pretty decent. There's nothing extraordinary, however, they are a lot smoother than NK creams in my opinion. When you compare the smoothness between the POM stem and the Uwo, it's obvious that the Uwo is smoother. These are priced at 91 cents a switch in Australia, which sits in the price bracket of mainstream switches. I'm going to show you guys how I lube my switches. Yes, there are many ways out there and I don't really enjoy lubing. And to be honest, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to this. This method works best for me. After I take all the switches apart, I use shock oil to lube the springs. I blob the bag and give it a good shake. A good shake, a shakety shake, a very nice shake. Just a shake, sorry, a uh, shakey booty. <laughs> I then lay it flat and rub it in for a bit. Then repeat, 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 repeat this process another time. I use a switch modding plate from Laser Ninja sold on switch keys. I put all the bottom housings orientated the same way. When I apply the loop, I try to get a pretty thin layer and I can achieve this by using the cap. Um, put a blob on it and just get enough on the brush on both sides so the loop isn't visible but it's wet. I then do all of the left side rails with two strokes each. I then flip the modding plate to do the other side. This just helps me keep track because most of the time I'm watching something on Twitch or YouTube while lubing and I lose track of what switch I'm up to. You can also loop the inside of the bottom housing and inside the stem hole and generally that can dampen the bottom out. But as you guys know, 
I love a hard smashing, pulverizing, decimating bottom out. So I don't do that. Usually I'd apply the switch film next, but in this case it doesn't need any, so the springs go on next. For the spring, I apply the same amount on the brush, just really getting a thin coating. I've seen people put two blobs on each side of the stem and brush it even, but for me that takes ages. I go ham with the strokes on all the side surfaces. The objective here is just to get an even layer. I lube the legs and twirl the pole in the midsection of the brush where there's a little bit of lube remaining. It takes me about two to three hours lubing a set of 70. Putting films probably takes a bit longer because it's so finicky. And I hate it when films aren't aligned nicely like this. Porum film actually sucks because after you use the switch puller a couple of times and it just, yeah, it just doesn't stay and looks like shit, honestly. Uh, so lastly, I chuck on the top housing and your finito bonito. So what do I like about this switch? I think it's brave to pursue a different switch material that's not conventional, despite having controversial opinions from the buyers on the NK Cream. The switch was made famous when Taya Types built Tifu, a premium custom, however. There was a lot of comments on how scratchy the switch was and it smelt like fish for some reason. I can confidently say the cow linears are different to the NK Creams, despite having the same materials. I can't really bring up many improvements other than the leaf and spring ping, which can be remedied by lube. So is this a killer switch? Personally, I'm not a huge fan that POM produces, but I certainly like the long pole and short travel distance. I would recommend this to anyone that hasn't tried POM switches, because it is different. So enjoy the sound test at the end. That's all from Killer Keyboards, I'll see you on the next one.